Hello, everyone. The story I'm going to share today is Star General Yang Yanzhao. Yang Yanzhao, born in 958 AD, was the eldest son of Yang Ye, a famous anti-Liao general of the Northern Song Dynasty. Yang Yanzhao was also called Yang Liulang. What was the reason? It turns out that the ancient called Sirius the Liulang star, and recognized it as a general among the stars. Yang Yanzhao was wise, brave, and good at fighting, and was powerful enemy of Liao Kingdom. Therefore, the Liao people regarded Yanzhao as Liulang star descending to earth, so they called him Yang Liulang. When Yang Yanzhao was a child, he was taciturn. And liked to play marching and battle formation games. His father Yang Ye said, "This son is very much like me." When Yang Zhao grew up, his father would always ask him to follow him wherever he went on a military expedition. In 986 A.D., Yang Zhao was only 29 years old. He followed his father to attack Liao army outside Yanmen Pass. They achieved one victory after another, and many cities were recovered. Yan Zhao served as a vanguard to attend Liao army. His arms was accidentally shot by a stray arrow, but he still persisted in fighting and became more courageous as he fought. In the end, he defeated Liao army and successfully took over the Shu state. In August of the same year. Unfortunately, his father Yang Ye died in the battle, which strengthened Yang Zhao's determination to fight with the Liao and regain any previously lost territories. In 999 A.D., the Liao army moved south on a large scale, and Yang Zhao was defending Sui City. At that time, the Liao Empress Dowager Xiao personally commanded the battle. So the Liao soldiers were in high spirits. The number of defenders in Sui City, however, was less than three thousand, and reinforcements were delayed. So the Song army was in great danger. Yang Zhao took his time and called on all residents and strongmen in the city to take turns defending the city, wearing armors and guarding the city day and night. The Liao army mobilized its main infantry force and used the sea tactics to rush toward this small sea city with an overwhelming momentum. At the same time, the Liao cavalry used their bows and arrows to swarm from behind, facing countless people below the city. Yan Zhao remained calm and commanded the defenders to intensively shoot crossbows at them while the enemy troops approached. In this way, he kept the Liao army from succeeding. Facing the fortified city, the Liao army had been unable to attack for a long time, and then they started using the most advanced heavy trebuchet cannons. And have vehicle ballistics at the same time. The city wall experienced many attacks, so it had huge cracks in many places and was at risk of collapsing any time. Thus, Sui City reached its most dangerous moment. It was early winter and the weather was not cold. Unexpectedly, the temperature suddenly dropped one day, which was like God's help. Yan Zhao then ordered the soldiers and all defenders in the city to carry large amount of water and pour it on the city wall. Overnight, the city wall turned into iron city that was both strong and smooth. The Liao army felt helpless and could not do anything. Thus, Sui City became a famous ice guarded city in Chinese history. Due to the blockade of Sui City, the Liao army's food route was cut off. Therefore, the Liao army's forces became weak. Eventually, they had no choice but to retreat. When the Liao army was withdrawing, 
Yanzhou contact other troops. The three armies decisively sent troops to surround the Liao army. The Liao army was completely defeated and suffered heavy casualties. The Battle of Sui City ended with Song Army's overall victory. After this battle, Yan Zhou was even more famous, and everyone was saying that Sui City had become known as Iron City because of him. Emperor Zheng Zong summoned him and praised him by saying he was wise, brave, and good at fighting. In managing troops, he was just like his father. In 1004 AD, Emperor Dao Zhexiao once again led 300,000 soldiers to go south in two directions. Yan Zhao led his troops to defeat the Liao army at the gate of Baozhou city and then went further into Yu city. Thus, the Liao army in Yu city dared not to fight, while the main force of Liao army was restricted to Hebei. Facing the continuing large-scale attacks by the Liao army, Emperor Zhen Zong had no confidence in defeating the Liao army. He did not listen to Yan Zhou's suggestion, and instead signed the Chenyuan Treaty with the Liao state, which made Song lose a chance to get back 16 cities occupied by the Liao. In 1009 AD, both Emperor Dao Zhexiao and the Liao Prime Minister Han Chang died, and Liao country became even weaker. Yan Zhao proposed the northern expedition to take back the lost land, but the proposal was not adopted by the imperial court. Instead, he was ordered to surprise the bandits. Yan Zhao had no choice but to continue guarding the border and protecting the local people. During his stay at the border, Yan Zhou lived a simple life. He shared joys and sorrows with the soldiers. He was wise, brave, and good at fighting, and gave strict orders. He always took the lead in the battlefield. And when he won the battle and was rewarded for his merits, he always gave credit to his subordinates. All the salaries and rewards he received were distributed among the soldiers. Therefore, the soldiers were very respectful to him. He met with great trust and love, and his, and his relations with the soldiers were just like his brothers and sisters. He guarded the border for more than 20 years and built then 2,000 kilometers of border fortresses on the Hebei border making the Song Dynasty border impregnable and loving people to live a peaceful life. Thank you very much for listening to the story. More touching stories will be ready for you if you just subscribe. Thank you again.